Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. Today we are going over some shotgun tips and how you can hit more 200 pumps, man. So uh, yeah, basically we're going to be going over a bunch of different ways that you can improve your shotgun aim. Uh, these will include ways to use your crosshair more efficiently, way to move more efficiently to hit better shots, as well as how to set up your controller in a way where your blinds enable you to do that as best as possible. So to start off with our first tip, and this kind of goes back to legacy settings. Um, I know you guys might think this only worked for legacy, but it really doesn't. And that is aiming down sights for your, your peaks while you're standing on the ground. Basically what this means is that aim it down sight when you take your shot. That's all there is to it. Now here's the thing. There's a huge advantage to that. Shotguns are not ARs, that, which I mean they don't have one single bullet coming out of them. They shoot a, a spread, and you'll notice if you look at my crosshair, it's bigger when I'm not aimed down sight. What this means is that the pellets from the shotgun, I believe it's like 10 or 11 pellets, they all hit within the crosshair. So if I aim down sight, I instantly get a bonus. Basically to damage. Whenever I aim down sight, I'm going to be doing more damage because I'm going to have a way higher likelihood of all my pellets hitting. The other thing about it is that you can set up your, your sensitivity and your controller or your keyboard and mouse so that you get basically a lower sensitivity when you're aimed down sight and then it's more flicky when you're, you know, when you're, in, uh, when you're in hip fire. Gosh. So basically you can use that to your advantage. When you make an edit on a player, you can basically, as soon as you're done the edit... Uh, aim down sight, hit your L2 button or whatever your your aim down sight button is. Basically what will happen is it will kind of cancel out the animation where it takes the aim down sight. And keep in mind, after you make an edit, it's 0.4 seconds before you're actually able to shoot your shotgun. So what this means is that when you aim down sight after hitting your edit, you're basically kind of shortening the time and increasing the accuracy of your shotgun shot and increasing the damage from your shotgun shot. This tip alone will lead to so many more freaking 200 pumps. It's gonna blow your guy's mind. Now, the one thing I will say is that this whole aiming down sight thing only works if you have the advantage. If you stole on the wall, the roof, or you're just making a right side peek around a wall, like you see somebody running up toward you and you take your, your little aim down sight before you take your shot, that is the only time you want to do that. If somebody, say, steals your wall and you're sitting there like, oh, you know, and they make their window edit, you don't want to sit still aiming down sight, like trying to get a peek on the person because that's just going to make you a very easy 200 pump. It only makes sense to aim down sight. Keep in mind, you're not moving as fast if you do it. So it only really makes sense to do it if you control the timing of the peek. If not, say the person's on the side trying to get a peek, maybe you like jump across, and try to get like a cheeky weird tag in. Obviously, I just shot the ground. You would do better in a real situation, clearly. But basically, you want to try to stay as mo like mobile as possible if you don't control the situation. Aiming down sight only works better if you control the situation. Now, the next thing is using editing to your advantage for setting up your shotgun shot. So again, this comes down to when we control the fight, right? So we got this person boxed over here. What you want to do is make edits that set your crosshair up to minimize how likely you are to miss, right? So what that means is instead, I see like a lot of people say, I want to shoot this guy. They make a big sweep edit, right? So like, okay, I want to shoot him on this side of the wall. I'm going to go, whoop. We're like... Whoop. And then you notice when I finish my edit, I'm all the way up here. Then I have to come all the way down and hit the headshot. And even after I do that, I only hit a 198. So basically, you want to be making things as easy as possible. And what you want to do is optimize your reticle movement. So say you want to make an arch edit. Start here. End on his head. So every single edit you make, you want to be ending on his head. It's something definitely to practice. Like if I make those flick edits, right? If I make big edits, it really, really minimizes my likelihood of hitting the shot. So you don't want to be making like angle edits where you flick downwards because you're going to end up at the person's feet. Then if you're also playing on controller, you have to overcome the aim assist to get up near the person's head again to hit a good shot. So arch edits work really good to end up where their head is. The other maneuver you can do is um, this edit. But you want to do it in one fluid movement if you want to be jumping in on the box on top of the person. So say this person is spraying back at you with an SMG. What you can do is you can use this edit, do it in one single motion, and hit the shot. And if they're spraying at you this way, you're going to end up behind the player. 
So I have three more tips for you guys, but this next one kind of precedes the next two, if that makes sense. And it's how you set up your binds so that you can optimize your aim and optimize your control over your shotgun during your build fights. And basically what it boils down to is you need to be rocking a way that you can jump and ideally switch your builds around and, and be able to build while keeping your thumb on your joystick. And in this situation, I play claw grip, but I jump on X. So what this means is that my index finger hits my jump button while my thumb stays on my joystick. So say I want to go for a jump shot. I can, you know, hit a clean headshot while being able to maintain my aim while jumping. That is huge for shotgun fights. There's so many situations where it becomes really, really important to be able to stay on your joystick while hitting shots. Like, say I go for this jump shot, right? I'm able to tweak my aim while I'm doing the jump. That is huge for for every single shotgun engagement. It's huge for pretty much any game. But shotguns in Fortnite, it's tremendous being able to jump and be able to keep aiming while you're jumping. It is huge. Now, there's multiple different ways you can accomplish this. One way is you can use claw grip, which is what I do. However, I am sponsored by Scuff. I do recommend if you don't want to go claw, if you're afraid of your fingers hurting, uh, you can get paddles. You can do a different setup. Paddles are a little bit more of a like an inherent way, uh, a more natural way to set up your controller because your, your fingers are already kind of chilling behind your controller already. Right? Like, if you look at my, my hands, my hands are already resting here exactly where the paddles would be. I don't have the paddles on right now because, again, I play double claw grip because I'm a weirdo. But if you want to set up paddles, that's the easiest way to do it. If you do use paddles, you would just bind essentially like your X button or maybe your switch mode button to the two back paddles. And that way, you'd be able to maintain your thumb on your joystick while doing these jump shots. Because again, the jump shots, the maintaining of your movement on controller with your aim on controller, if you can do both at the same time, it's literally like you become twice the player overnight. Just making that switch. And now the next thing you should practice, and you can do this, I'm doing this, gonna do this on a dummy right now, but you can do this in like zone wars, box fights, so many different things, but maybe not box fights, but pro probably zone wars are definitely a way to practice this and do well in it, is jump shooting, which is, it used to be called the Tifu Classic, I don't think Tifu plays Fortnite anymore, but basically what you do is you track when you're in a build fight the player underneath you, so say you're absolutely cranking, and then I see the player underneath me, you jump out, shoot, and then build your floor or your ramp or whatever you want to build next. So that's what it looks like, right? So if you're the player underneath, you basically see a player fly out, and then a, you take damage, and then a floor appears underneath them. And you have to be, like, insanely quick to be able to turn damage on a player who's doing this. To show you guys one more time what it's like. So on that player's set, and they only see you for, like, 200 like a 200th of a second right like they see you for a split second the likelihood they're gonna be able to shoot back at you is very minimal and this technique is like so good for getting essentially easy damage you might not be able to get a load of damage in because you might be like you know like a floor or two floors above the player all right i missed that one let's go again you know but like one floor up i'm doing 143 damage by doing this jump out maneuver from two floors up, you know, I did 59 there, 98 there, right? So it's not necessarily about doing the most damage possible. It's about doing the most damage, but also making yourself incredibly, incredibly hard to hit. And this works so well. And again, you really cannot do this unless you master the ability to jump while keeping your thumb on your joystick. Because otherwise, it's not so much a time. The last tip I'll give, and it kind of relates back to the editing and setting yourself up properly for your shot, but it's always aim for the upper part of their body, but try to initiate the aim at the upper part of the body. I often see people kind of approaching corners with their head down like this, and then if somebody's on the other corner, like you come around the corner and you see them, on with aim assist on controller, like look how fast they can flick up, right? That's fully, fully hitting my joystick. Full torsion on the stick. If I look at the player, see how much slower it is? There's a significant slowdown when I'm actually on the player. So, for one thing, that difference in how fast it takes you to aim can cause inconsistencies in your shot, can cause you to miss your headshots. 
For two, it also is just straight up slow, a slower thing. So the player might be able to respond and get a shot in on you before you're ready. So always make sure you kind of approach corners, if, especially if you expect a player to be, be on the other side of it, like a little bit under head height. You almost want to have your, your, your reticle at like neck height, right? Like about this height here. Because the other thing is, is, if I shoot a player in the neck, it still hits for insane damage. Because you're still getting, like, half of a headshot. So you're getting all of that bullet, like, essentially headshot multiplication. Even though you're not necessarily getting a perfectly clean headshot like that. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense, guys. I hope that helped you out. We got another little fat solo dub coming up for the rest of this gameplay. If you guys enjoy this tips and tricks video, make sure you smash the like on it. Hit that sub if you guys are new. And let me know what you guys would like to learn next in Fortnite. Bet. You mean I don't own that? Peace control! Even though the kid was kind of a bot. Give me that blue pump, baby. Let's go. Or gold pump. What am I? Whoop diddy scoop. Poop. Does this guy know? He kind of does, but kind of doesn't. I missed the shot because I suck. That's hella weird though. Come on. Oh, I stink. Dude, what is this weird fight, man? Alright. This guy seems like he has like half of a brain. What are you doing, man? <laughs> oh. Dang, dude, I keep airballing that pump, man. My friend, what? Okay.
Bro. How many tags, man? How many tags, man? That is huge. Being able to move and shoot is like... What in the hell? Oh, the fire trap kill. Let's go, dude. Yo, that's our first trap kill, I think. Or our first trap kill dub of this season.